morning. Good morning, guys. Uh, good morning. This is our Promise Keepers Bible study for the week. Um, well, today is the 30th, I think, of uh, September. And uh, we've been going through a series of devotionals on Promise 2, Brotherhood, this week. Uh, which we'll go through a few of those uh, with the, here online and um, uh, just I'm looking forward forward to to that and maybe to sit some discussion about a few other things and getting caught up on uh, everybody's what's going on with everybody here um, and uh, again praying that uh, everyone can. Uh, join us in the PK app, which is now back up and stable. Um, I believe things are working. If something isn't working, you can certainly let me know. I'll pass that along to our admin, and <clears throat> or uh, people can just um, email um, app at pknet.org, and um, that'll get to them, and they will hopefully get working on it. Um, but uh, let me pray us in first. Oh, Abba, Father, you are Lord God Almighty, and we thank you for all of your creation, Lord. We just, we love the sound of your name. We love uh, your spirit being all around us and guiding us day to day. And uh, Lord, um, since you're the creator of all things, it's just awesome to look around in your world and see all the beauty that you have, the, the miracles that you do around us each and every day. And one of those miracles is just the air that we breathe and the, the pumping of our hearts so that we can um, be a part of this earth. So, <clears throat> Lord, I pray as we do that as individuals, Lord, that that. Uh, you continue to lay on our hearts the fact that we need others as well. We need to love those around us, those that you put in our path um, during this time, short time we have on earth, and uh, help us, Lord, to have brothers, brothers that uh, love us and brothers that uh, maybe hold us accountable, brothers that we can uh, call upon uh, any time that they're needed. And uh, Lord, I just you pray that you'll use this uh, this series of devotionals that we did this week, uh, Lord, to guide our minds in that and that uh, our discussions today will be led by your Holy Spirit in a way that others that might watch this back later will see you, come closer to you. Uh, and Lord, uh, maybe find that that one, two, or three friends, or their core to three strands that will help to keep uh, them on the path of knowing you better as they get to know others and love others the way you've called us to do. So, Lord, guide our time, guide our minds and our hearts and the words that come from our mouths, and just show us favor in all that you do through us in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Tim. Hopefully you, I'm not sure. Glad you're here. Um, even if you aren't able to come off mute, uh, but please do win. And if you can and share the discussion with us, uh, like I said, um, uh, we're, 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 going through a theme this week in this study that we're doing, and I'm borrowing uh, devotionals out of uh, a book of devotionals, a Promise Keeper's book of devotional devotionals called uh, Men of Integrity, and um, that is a pretty old book, so sometimes some of these might be a little dated, but uh, the point is the same. Um, the uh, story is just meant to get our minds thinking and 
Um, so what we'll try to do with these is um, certainly go through the, the the key Bible verse and any of the um, Bible verses that are given to us as bonus reading that you know strikes someone they want to look up and want to read. Um, and um, and I won't go through every devotional. Uh, hopefully, people are able to do that during the week now for themselves, or may even if you miss a day, um, you know, go back and and do a couple. They usually take about five minutes to read, ten or fifteen minutes to uh, to study a little bit on them, to think a little bit on them, to meditate on them, uh, and then to um, think about some of the questions that exist or are part of these devotionals. So uh, not meant to be a lot of homework this time or for now um, until we, we uh, but they are meant to, um, I, I do intend for them, for them to lead us through another version, another discussion of the seven promises as we go through and uh, to this week. The theme is friendship and accountability, which leads us to a promise uh, to brotherhood. And, um, you know, the fact that we need others to walk through this life with. And I think, I believe um, Carl is either on his, he's either on his last day of, I think he's on his last day of study for, uh, and sort of getting the, the group of, preparers together the the ones that are leading the walk uh for his uh crossroads experience um, so i think he told me he won't be here this week he should be back next week and then his walk is the next week something like that and i may be i may be wrong on the timing but um um so a promise keeper Sorry, I think this brings this up. So promise two uh, is, try to get to it. Oh, I think I put it in here. I thought I put it in there. Get to it another way. Bear with me one more second here. So promise two is a promise keeper is committed to pursuing vital relationships with a few other men, understanding that he needs brothers to help him keep his promises. And um, last week we did promise one. The first week, um, so this is week three. The first week we went through promise, we did promise four, um, a man and his family and uh, trying to be a, a godly man for those in his family and um, a godly father, a godly husband. And then last week we talked about um, honoring Christ and that's uh, promise one. And the fact that a promise keeper is committed to honoring Jesus Christ through worship, prayer and obedience to God's word in the power of the Holy Spirit. So this week, as we focus on brotherhood, um you know, we've got these these few devotionals to to go through and uh again i'm using that book and you can find that on um i think it was you chris a few years back that uh turned us on, turned me on to being able to to do these studies uh through books that we can um you know guys can go and check out for an hour at uh www.archive.org and um, I think you'll find it pretty quickly if, if, if you go to do that um, just searching on man of integrity uh, and it's sort of a brown covered book that um, I did put a picture of in the app a week or so ago a couple weeks ago but um for, for the Monday, so I'll just step through the, each of these and we'll talk about the Bible verse and a couple questions for each. But the first one, I, I'll read the 
uh, the, the devotional itself. And from then on, I'll try to just summarize enough for us to have the discussion. Uh, but the title is Why I Resist Accountability. And the uh, script key, key Bible verse is Proverbs 27, 17. Uh, the bonus reading is Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Um, and I certainly wouldn't mind if, if somebody would look that up and be able to read that one. That's one of my life verses. I should have it memorized, but I uh, only have the quarter of three strands part of that uh, uh, fully memorized. Um, <clears throat> but if that if that works out, we'll, we'll use that. Uh, verses 9 through 12. <clears throat> but um, first of all, Proverbs 27, 17 states that as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And um, um, so the, the we call it, the devotional starts off with uh, Doug Smith, with whom I am I've been meeting weekly since 1976. And remember, this book was written in the late 90s, I guess. Overall, the devotional book was. Um, so for 20 years, uh, 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 Doug Self and I were enjoying our early cup of coffee as usual. We filled each other in on our week's events as usual. And then out of the blue, Doug said, Lewis, I have something for the Lord from you. And this was not as usual. So Doug proceeded to point out some ungodly attitudes in me that he'd been noticing. He had, uh, he'd been hearing me be critical and unloving. And I thought, ouch. I knew what he was referring to. The encounter reminded me why I needed accountability and why I sometimes resist it. And I find accountability difficult for at least four reasons. One is I fear rejection. I also feel embarrassed and I fear giving up control. And I don't like facing my negative feelings. So fortunately, my accountability group got my attention and I, <clears throat> excuse me, I had some long, painful talks with the Lord. I was reminded of God's grace toward me, and I had to deal with the speck in my eye, which turned out to be a two by four. Lewis McBurney, a psychiatrist in Marble, Oklahoma. Uh, does anybody want to read Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 through 12? I will. What advantage is there to the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the endeavor which God has given the sons of men with which to occupy themselves. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in their heart. Yet so that man will not find out the work which God has done from the beginning, even to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be glad and to do good in one's lifetime. You're on mute, James. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the reading of God's word. And um, that particular version didn't have um, oh, I, I said Ephesians word and I um, uh, that was Ecclesiastes 3. Did I read the wrong? Uh, I read um, the wrong chapter. It was Ecclesiastes <laughs> 4, 9 through 12. Um, Second try. Okay, thanks. Two are better than one. There we go. Two are better than one because they have good wages for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not a second one to lift him up. Furthermore, if two lie down together, they keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? And if one can overpower him who is alone, two can stand against him. 
a cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. Okay, great. That sounds a little more familiar. I, I wasn't sure what version you were reading out of, and but it didn't. It wasn't hitting me the way um, that life first usually hits me when, especially when you get to the the cord of three strands, not being not quickly broken part of it, and. Uh, or torn apart because uh, I, I I believe in small groups as you guys know um, you know I think I would love to have hundreds of guys joining us here on Saturday mornings but if we did that we'd still break into small groups of probably seven to uh, no more than 12 um, and God has seemingly kept this as a small group Um for many times, sometimes we have more than just the two or three of us, but <clears throat> I don't think we've ever had over 12 guys on the on a call, but um, if we did, we'd break out into breakout rooms and have discussions, and hopefully we'd have a set of questions um, for, people, for guys to go through. But uh, So the... <clears throat> The devotional uh, also includes a personal challenge and a thought to apply. So the personal challenge for this Monday um, devotional is if you if you're ready, sorry, if you're already in an accountability group, thank God for each of the men, the other men. If you're not, ask God if He's leading you to join one. The thought to apply is. A single arrow is easily broken, but not ten in a bundle. That's a Chinese proverb, I guess. But um, <clears throat> so, what do you guys think of accountability groups? Are you part of one? And um, it ha as being in, if you have been in one, has it helped? Uh, if you haven't been in one, do you think it would help? Tim, you're off mute. Are you able to give us any yeah, insight? I like the idea of, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you now. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, I like the idea of an accountability group. Um, in my end one, there, there's uh, actually I moved away from uh, an area in Minnesota here where there was uh, three of us total, and we still text and talk. But it's not that close. It's like when you actually see somebody, and uh, you can you know see their uh, reactions and their uh, just their face, you know, and what you know. It's, a lot of people wear their feelings on their sleeves and shows. You know, uh, so I miss that up here. Uh, and uh, actually, I went Thursday night to uh, the church we've been going two for the last four years that uh, they had a men's group out of the blue. And I've asked the pastor, you know, is there a men's group here? No, not really. They, you know, a lot of these guys up here are real hard workers and they work away from their homes on the weekdays and come home and that type of thing. And so, okay, well, all right. And on Thursday, there was a guy that stepped up and told the pastor, we need a home. We need a men's group. And he took, the bull by the horns and I think there was 30 guys there on uh, Thursday night so that's good so yeah I like it I'm a, I, I like them um, I never used to I had a lot of things that I was hiding from and I didn't want to expose all that but uh, God had other ideas and so yeah I like uh, men's groups they're very good and two or three guys is probably is best but Got to take what he gives me right now. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're yeah. in accountability group. Hey, you're my group. I guess I can say. Yeah, thir um, thirty guys is is quite a large number. Um, you yeah, gotta prepare differently for for that kind of a group because uh, there's going to be guys in there that probably just want to be entertained, and there's going to be guys in there that want to do a Bible study, and there's guys in there that might yeah. want to be a part of an accountability group, but. Just getting together like that would be great, and hopefully, uh, you know, we can pray that, you know, what 
what comes of it is what your church needs, right? And uh, you know, we certainly, I think we've talked about a number of things here that, you know, if any of the resources that Promise Keepers has that would be useful, we'd love to help them uh, put them in, you're in Minnesota still, you said, is that right? Minnesota? Yep. Yeah. So we'll put you in Minnesota. contact with, with Dennis Gardner. He's our national lead ambassador, but he's also the state of Minnesota ambassador. And, uh, and, um, yeah, I've talked to it. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Because Dennis is, I've, I've talked to him. And I, he certainly yeah, has just access my, uh, to, uh, to a lot of resources to help groups get started and whatnot. Sorry, what'd you say? Yeah. Step to it. Yeah, I need to maybe send this guy's name to him or or uh, talk to this guy and see if he would be open to meet with him. That would be, that would be the best. Yeah. yeah, but in the meantime, you know, you hopefully this guy knows of the thousands of potential resources out there and will approach it in a way that, you know, um, serves uh, as many men in the church as possible because... Um, yeah. You know me, I I have put a considerable amount of my time and my retired uh, ministry work here in to, uh, into developing men who disciple other men and um, helping organizations, Christian organizations especially, and churches to develop effective men's ministries and to help teach and equip those that are out there doing it in the local churches uh, to, to do just just that. So uh, Chris, anything anything from on that challenge about for you? Um, I have been in the past. Uh, right now, uh, you know, the church we're a part of is, I don't know, historically opposed to small groups. I think once upon a time, somebody tried to sm start small groups and they very quickly devolved into gossip gossip mills so the, the current leadership is kind of stuck on oh small groups are a bad idea um, so my accountability is a bit more informal and self-directed you know I have two or three guys that um, I have one that checks in with me every week with some questions to answer and then uh, I have two or three guys that I know that I can text them at any time day or night and say hey I'm facing a temptation of x and one of the one of the things I've learned over the last five years is that, um, and it comes from a book called The Cure, by the way, if anybody's interested in that, it's a great, great little read. Uh, but he talks about the sin cycle, about how this, kind of like Romans 1, this leads to this, leads to this, leads to this, leads to this, only in, you know, in, in practical terms. And he says in the book that at any point along the way, disclosure breaks the cycle and so the sooner you disclose a challenge before it becomes a sin before or you know the further down is an addiction and spiritual death the sooner you disclose the sooner that cycle gets broken and so that, that just the act of saying hey you know i i uh passed a mcdonald's today i pass i'm passing a mcdonald's and i'm feeling tempted to go grab some egg McMuffins or whatever, you know, that just sending that text message has, has the power to diffuse that, that temptation. So I have two or three guys I can do that with. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. As soon, as soon as you say something about it to someone else, um, takes some of the sting out of it or the, the urgency of doing it, I think. Um, it reminds me of Jesus saying that, uh, I think it was Jesus might've been John um the darkness hates the light and so just sending that text message is cracking a door of light onto that that thing and it needs to scurry away yeah well i've been a part of accountability groups uh, many years uh, also support groups and leadership group all kinds of groups but um i think in this case um excuse me the accountability groups i've got uh, an ambassador group that you know that I lead, and those guys that told them to hold me accountable um, on things, as well as uh, 
you know, Dennis uh, himself, and uh, you know, I I've got probably two or three others. Uh, I feel blessed to be able to have those um, guys that across the nation, um, wherever I might be traveling, or um, or just right here in the Baltimore area. You know, I've been working with some guys for 20 years, and there's certainly accountability brothers, even though we don't meet regularly for that purpose. We meet for prayer, and then the prayer leads to um, us dealing with things in our life. So, uh, well, let's move on to the Tuesday uh, titled, He Knows Everything About Life, About My Life. And uh, this particular key Bible verse is Ecclesiastes 4.10, which we've already read. But, um, it goes, if, if one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Uh, the bonus reading is 1 Samuel 20. Um, I guess the whole, ver the whole chapter. But um, I don't know how long that chapter is off the top of my head. But, um the, as the devotional goes, um, this uh, Buffalo Bills wide receiver um, uh, had some veteran teammates who invited him to a preseason party. and um, There were gorgeous women everywhere. Um, they were offering free sex to any of the guys who wanted it. Uh, it was an eye-opening experience because Justin had never... Uh, been a part of something like this, or heard about things like this. He had heard about things like this, but was uh, so naive. Uh, he said he got out of there as fast as he could. So as a single Christian, as a single Christian guy, he had just committed to saving sex for marriage. To do so, he knew he, he, knew he had to, to run from temptation. He uh, says, I'd rather not have been I'd rather not have my mind polluted by those things. Once uh, you've been in a couple of situations where there's temptation, you learn how to avoid them and don't go back. Mm -hmm. So uh, Justin um, also calls his best friend and accountability partner, Steve Sinstrom, um, and says, you, you need someone to hold you accountable for walking with Christ. Steve does that for me. He he knows everything about my life, good and bad, and there's nothing he won't hold me accountable for. Um, the personal challenge is, is there someone you can call when you struggle with temptation? If so, thank God for him and pray for God to strengthen him. The thought is uh, flee temptation and don't leave a forwarding address by anonymous. So um, you know, this kind of leads from, you know, naturally flows from the previous devotional in a way that, um, you know, yeah, we all should have an accountability group. But is there somebody in that accountability group that when you run into some situation of temptation, that you can and would call or have called um, in the past. I know for me, um, I have that. Um, I'm a part of a, a couple of uh, groups called, we call a core to three strands. So there'll be three to four guys in a group and um, we meet on, you know, just over text or uh, if we can get a short phone call in, uh, we, we do that each week, and, but we definitely text and check in with each other uh, and know enough about each other's lives to know the hard questions to ask and to, uh, to hold each other accountable. And, you know, those, those are some of the guys that I might call uh, if needed. I certainly feel comfortable calling them. But again, I, I've got um, brothers, Christian brothers here in this, the Baltimore area. If I needed to to talk to one one of them, um, they would certainly lead me through that, through uh, and away from that temptation as well. What about you guys? Yeah, 
Yes, I do. I have one guy that I reach out to, and uh, and he, he reaches out to me. Also, it's kind of a two way street, so it's a good thing. Like uh, Chris mentioned, there about a text. That's how we usually communicate because he's at work or else I'm at work, and yeah, it's very strong. I think it does. Like Chris said, as soon as you uh, put it out there in the light, the light takes it and. Jesus takes it. And another thing is to walk around with the idea of when you're tempted to say, call out to his name, Jesus, 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 which uh, it works. <laughs> All I can say is it works. Yeah. And he is always there no matter, no matter what time of day or night or, or situation. Yeah. He says, use our, use his name, use his yeah. name. It says in the scripture. Uh, and yeah, I think Chris, you've already given us an example of accountability uh, person that you probably would call or text. So um, the next uh, the next devotional in the series here for the week is titled Paul, Barnabas, and Timothy. And the scripture is in First Timothy one eighteen through nineteen. Uh, the bonus is. Uh, reading is in Acts 11, 22 through 29. Um, the key Bible verse, 1 Timothy 1, 18 through 19, says that Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by following them, you may fight the good fight, holding on to faith and a good conscience. Um, so yeah, and you know, we've talked about it here on, on this, uh, group many times and certainly, uh, part of this promise to brotherhood is, um, if, if not initially, it certainly eventually deals with, uh, each person, each man having a Paul, a Barnabas and a Timothy, somebody who's pouring into them and mentoring them, um, somebody like a Timothy that, that, that you're pouring into, that you're spending time with. And, you know, some of us have uh, children that have been blessed by God with sort of that natural built-in Timothy that we ha uh, hope and trust that we can get them to listen enough to us uh, about, you know, what we believe in life that, um, that, that, that they'll at least catch, um, you know, some of, some of the, the godliness that we're trying to, um, live our life by, even if we're not perfect. Um, and then a Barnabas is somebody who kind of walks on, is, is a person on your same level, an encourager, uh, an accountability person that, you know, um, you know, you're just there to do life together um, on, a, on a regular basis. And like I said, each person needs uh, all three of these. Um, and it says in here, especially for a Barnabas, that Barnabas is a soul brother, somebody who loves you, but is not impressed by you. Somebody to whom you can be accountable, somebody who's willing to keep you honest, who's willing to say, hey, man, you're neglecting your wife. Don't give me any guff. Um, but um, do you have these three guys in your life? I have um, Barnabas and Paul, and right now my most likely Timothy are my sons, the ones who are still that I still have a lot of time with. Um, I don't really have a an adult Timothy at this point in my life, but I do have a Paul and, and at least one Bar Barnabas. You know, and, and these Pauls, these mentors, and these Pauls and Timothys, well, all three really, um, you know, different stages in our life. It may be different people. We may move away and not be as physically close to one of these people that, um, and, and you may still consider them a Paul, 
but um, it may change. Just it's just a good idea to uh, first of all be learning with somebody who's um, maybe maybe not farther down the farther down the journey, the spiritual journey as you are, but certainly at least as far uh, as you and somebody that can, is willing to give you time and pour time into you. Um, and um, yeah, so mine is, and that has really changed over the last couple, the last couple year, I guess, or so. Uh, uh, Pastor Art Remington was my Paul for many years. And um, I've had my, my pastor at church sort of be my Paul. I've had guys who've led other small groups and doing equipping uh, who've been Paul's to me for many years uh, now that I still do meet with. Um, uh, we meet under the guise of talking about um, equipping other men, but, you know, by doing that, we are, um, they are pouring into, into me and I let them know that I consider them Paul's um, and, and, um, uh, the same with pharmacists and Timothy's. What about you, Tim? Um, you, I know we've talked about this concept. Um, how do you live this out? Do you, are you able to live this out in your life with your, um, long scheduled days? Yeah, it's, um, his name is used a lot and not in, uh, <laughs> Not in uh, a derogatory. Jesus, the name of our God and Savior, is used a lot in my long days because there's there's even places I get into that I have no cell phone service. So it's um, me and God, me and the Lord. But as far as uh, Timothy, a Barnabas, and a Paul in my life, I would uh, say uh, I've got the two other guys that we uh, keep each other on a pretty short leash asking each other how you're doing and not just how you're doing you know what I mean but how are you doing when you mm, walk yeah, yeah. The, the, I met uh, with yeah. Paul I met with my Paul last week um, we're probably down to about once or twice a month now and we meet at Panera or McDonald's or something and grab a cup of coffee and uh, what have you. And just in the middle of our, just our regular <clears throat> talking about what we read in the Bible this week, or he's about 20 years older than me. So he really is one whole generation further down the road. And, and I've really come to value that. And just in the middle of our conversation, not unlike Paul, you know, Paul would eventually like just stop in the middle of thought just to have an outburst of joy about something. Well, my Paul stopped in, stopped in the middle of his conversation to tell me that, you know, when I first started meeting with you five years ago was because, because I thought you needed it, meaning, meaning me. And that was totally true. But over the last two, three years, I have come to treasure this time together more than you'd know. And I was totally taken aback by that. And I, I, I was, I was floored by that, uh, by that expression. So that, I don't know why it should surprise me because Paul wrote regularly. Oh, I, I'm, I'm overjoyed every time I think about you and I pray for you for regularly. And, uh, but you know, it's different when you're on the receiving end of that kind of grace and love that, um, it was a special moment. I won't forget that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, the personal challenge for this devotional is, can you be a Paul, a spiritual mentor to someone else? And uh, so just ask God to to keep you open to this. And the thought uh, to apply as a friend is one who makes me do my best. Oswald Chambers. So the Thursday... Um, Devotional goes to uh, the title of That's Hard for Me. And the key Bible verse is Psalm 51 17. And there's a couple of bonus readings in Matthew 5 3 through 10 and James 5 13 through 18. But uh, Psalm 51 17 says, 
the, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. So um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with a popular Christian group called For Him. Uh, I know about the time my son was born in 1995, they were big and um, and and I really loved listening to so many of their songs. Um, but but they had they've had it says here they've had their spats. Um, you, know, you put a bunch of people and you pack them on a tour bus and. You know, situations are, are just ripe for conflict. Um, but it's how you, to in order to resolve those conflicts, um, the Christian band for him met, met regularly uh, with an accountability board of friends and pastors, and they were able to vent their feelings for one another. And one of the most important things that they said they were learning was that I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, it, it's hard for for them to for a person to say that in a group setting and a tight uh, knit team of people who are trying to work together and are performing at a high level like that. Um, but we all need to learn to let go of the need to always be right. Uh, one of the members, Mark, says. Um, our love for one another grows stronger because we deal with our conflicts more openly in a way the Bible commands us to. Are you, so a question for us all is, are you willing to admit to your friends when you're wrong? If you are, your friends likely will be also. So personal challenge is how do you usually handle conflict with friends? And then secondly, ask God to help you confess when you've been when you've been wrong. And the thought to apply, friends, if we be honest with ourselves, uh, we shall be honest with each other. George MacDonald, a Scottish writer from the 19th century. So how is it that you handle uh, conflict with friends? For me, I usually back off for a while, <laughs> whether it's a few minutes, a few hours, days. Um, I, I, you know, we're not talking about spats with your spouse. Uh, those probably need to be handled a little more timely, a little more, and differently, and with different. Uh, feelings involved but with guy friends um you know when you're in any relationship you're going to have times where you don't see eye to eye um where you know things just annoy you or grate on your nerves right uh i'm sure i do that with you guys sometimes um on certain things um and i can only you know I only trust that that uh, because we're Christian brothers you're still going to love me anyway despite my faults and my um, you know my issues but um, but that's usually how I handle conflicts with friends is I back off I pray um, I, I I I try to ask God where. Where do I need to change in this? I didn't always, I wasn't always that way. I was usually uh, until coming back to Christ in 95. And then you know, since then learning on a daily basis, you know, how to better get along with people. Um, I didn't really care how to get along with people. Um, I was uh, in an officer position in the military and I felt like I was a leader and that uh, usually, you know, my way was the right way, so you better get on board. Um, I, I had a colonel sit me down in his office uh, one one time uh, when I had been in the Air Force. He had, he had known me for a couple of years because of, uh, you know, company grade officer position that I held, 
think I was vice president or something. And um, so I thought it was hot stuff. Well, we were working with a group of colonels uh, who were trying to help put on a 40th birthday of the Air Force. And he was one of them sort of on the board of directors. He was the chief of staff for the division that I was a part of and sat me down. And he said, James, uh, you really need to, to know this. Um, you're right a lot of the time, but you're not always right. And sometimes even if you are right, other people um, can be right also. Their way of doing things can be the right way of doing things too. And that sort of that stuck with me. Probably the way he did it, he closed his door, pulled his trash can out in the middle, middle of the floor and said, I'm going to have your ass in that trash can before <laughs> you leave. And um, so um, he didn't he didn't physically do anything, but just the words that he used, he, he knew would be a Somehow he knew it would be effective. And um, anyway, that's my story. And I'll stick to it for now until I get better at, at it. Hmm. Anybody else uh, want to confess uh, when you, how do you confess when you're wrong or, or deal with conflict? Maybe I don't spend enough time with friends, but I'm racking my brain to remember the last time I had conflict with a friend. No, I, I, okay, I'm sure I don't spend enough time with friends. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, that, that applies in your in your family too. I think um, the the principle anyway even though we're talking about brotherhood here, uh, it is a vital relationship. Um, and you're going to have conflict in any vital relationship if you're going to stay together. Uh, it's just inevitable. I don't know if you guys, if, I think we've talked before probably about um, this relational diamond um, that we used to teach out of a book called Brothers, written by uh, Jeff Gorsuch. And... Um, and Dan Schaefer, and Dan Schaefer was one of the four founding fathers of Promise Keepers. And, um, you know, there's becoming acquaintances. Uh, so, so it's kind of like going around, you know, first base, second base, third base, and then to home. Uh, from home to first base, you're becoming acquaintances. And um, and, and you'll lose some guys uh, that just aren't going to be your friends, right? For whatever reason, timing, time uh, that they have or you have. Uh, but going into second base is um, is kind of called the storming phase or uh, in between first and second, the storming phase, because usually there's conflict when you spend uh, enough time with guys. So, you know, there's some friction. You have to learn how to deal with that friction. If you ever want to get to, um, you know, that other, that next phase of moving from friends to brothers and, um, you know, being able to nor sort of have normal uh, re relationship with them and brotherhood with them. And, and then also with the goal of you know, going from third to home uh, is becoming more Christ-like and working together and actually doing life together, or doing ministry together or whatever. So, well, um, hmm. check the timing here. Yeah, we'll, we'll, let me move on to Friday and we'll get to, um, Saturday and Sunday are questions. And, um, so the buddy system on Friday, um, Proverbs 18, 24, and the bonus reading is Amos, uh, chapter three, verse three. Uh, but Proverbs 18, 24 reads a man of many, of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Um, the story goes, um, you know, we we're at war with Vietnam. Uh, this guy was in ranger school at Fort Benning, uh, and it was brutal. And um, he could still hear, he can still hear the raspy voice of his sergeant. We are here to save your lives. We're going to see to it that you overcome all your natural fears. We're going to show you just how much incredible stress the human mind and body can endure 
and when we're finished with you, you will be the U.S. Army's best. <clears throat> um, later on, the the sergeant announced uh, uh, our first the first assignments, and uh, they moved on to um, you know just becoming really tough. You know things like running four miles in a in full battle gear and rappelling down a sheer cliff. Um, and before we got into all those kinds of things, the sergeant had told them, find a buddy. Find yourself a ranger buddy, he growled. You will stick together. You will never leave each other. You will encourage each other. And as necessary, you will carry each other. If it's the Army's way of saying difficult assignments require a friend, together is better. Who's your ranger buddy? This was written by Stu Weber, who recently passed, and he was a pastor of Good Shepherd Community Church in Oregon for, at the time of the writing. Uh, but personal challenge, think of some tough spots in your life. What difference have friends made during those times? What difference might they have made? And then thank God for the ranger buddies in your life. The thought to apply is no problem is ever as dark when you have a friend to face it with you. That's another anonymous uh, ad, but um, you know, who's your ranger buddy? It might be that same guy who you call call on at, at two o'clock in the morning, but it's, it's really could be somebody else, somebody that you are walking this life with on a daily basis. It might, in my case, I think um, if these weren't guys who are virtually and uh, geographically separated from me as much as they are, uh, my cords of three strands you know, probably would be ranger buddies. We're certainly spiritual ranger buddies. But uh, I just ask, for, ask you guys to think about friends that have made the difference in your life. and um, What has that been like for you? Tim, I think, yeah, Tim says he's got to run. Um, well, let's, let's finish up here. Um, Saturday uh, in this series is a, a, an up close and personal, uh, usually with a different um, leader of Promise Keepers. Uh, this one is with uh, Spencer Perkins, who I don't really know too much about him, um, but it's about when friends disappoint each other and Spencer was a national leader in the area of racial reconciliation and community development until his death at age 43, um, the year that this was written. In his final public address, Spencer talked about a difficult time in his friendship with Chris Rice, his ministry partner of 10 years. The question is, what happened between Chris and you? And uh, he answers, Chris and I came to what seemed like insurmountable obstacles in our relationship. By summer's end, both of us had held tightly to a long list of ways that each had been hurt or disappointed by the other. And we were close to settling for ir irreconcilable differences and going our separate ways. And the the uh, interviewer says, what, what did you do? He says, well... We sought the counsel of some dear friends. In my mind, we were just going through the motions. The damage was already done. The pain was too great. And these friends rambled on about grace. And uh, Spence, um, Spencer said, yeah, yeah, I know all about grace. At least he thought he did. But what happened was through that conversation, Chris uh, and Spencer saw uh, clearly as clearly as anything that they could ever be seen before, that only by giving each other grace would they find healing and restoration. They would never hold on to their grievances and demand that all of their hearts be redressed, or we could, we could do that, or we could follow God's example, give each other grace and trust God for the lack 
they chose grace. Uh, and then this was uh, written in a book called More Than Equals, uh, co-authored by Chris Rice and Spencer Perkins. Um, and then for personal study and, and group discussion, the Sunday uh, input here is real, a real life application. Uh, key Bible verse, 2 Corinthians 8, 21, and um, bonus reading, 1 Peter 3, 8 and 9. So if you wouldn't mind looking up 1 Peter 3, 8 and 9 uh, as we finish up here, and we'll go to prayer. Uh, I'll read 1 Corinthians 8, 21, Chris. Um, for we are taking pains. I'm sorry, 1 Peter uh, which? 1 Peter 3, uh, verses 8 and 9. Got it. So 1 Corinthians 8, 21 says, For we are taking pains to do what is right, not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of men. So let's think and pray about these uh, these following sentence starters. Um, in the week coming, in the week ahead, might think of these maybe as triggers to discussions with other men that you come across or that you meet, but um, to me, accountability means blank. Secondly, a uh, second question to co co contemplate is, it's difficult to be accountable to someone because blank. Uh, and then thirdly, lastly, if I could ask God for one thing to help me in the area of friendship, excuse me, and account and help me in the area of friendship and accountability, it would be blank. So if you have first Peter three, eight and nine, if you'd read that, I'd appreciate it. Then we'll go to the prayer. Now to sum up all of you, be like minded, sympathetic, brotherly, tender hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, giving a blessing instead, for you are called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. So the idea of accountability and um, just getting along and having friend, friends to hold, hold, you know, to talk to when you need to and all that. Um, uh, hopefully maybe, you know, maybe uh, you'll have the opportunity to talk to somebody uh, along those lines this week and I'll pray that I will as well but um, would you like to pray us out on those terms you want me to do that sure I will okay pray us into this next week our heavenly father it is your gracious gift that uh, you designed us to need um, to need friends to need those to hold our arms up need those to pick us up when we fall, need those to see our blind spots and to have the courage and the relationship with us to call us out about them. And Father, I know that I personally um, need to deal with that third question. The, the area that I most need help with in friends is having deeper friendships with two or three guys. Father, I pray for me personally that you'll lead me to that one or two man who has a similar desire to go deeper, uh, somebody who I live close enough to and in proximity to that, that I can spend more time with them and we can uh, go deep with each other. And I pray that for any of the brothers who might be listening to this later, Father, that, uh, that they would take a careful evaluation of their lives and make sure that they're not trying to be the Lone Ranger, for even the Lone Ranger had his tanto. And Father, I pray that um, we would not allow um, hurts or offenses to uh, to break a friendship. Uh, that we would that we would practice forgiving and offering grace, and that we would uh, we would follow Jesus' command that when we're at the altar getting ready to give our offering, if we realize that one of our brothers has something against us, that we'd leave our offering there and then go reconcile to that brother. Uh, so that we might restore that fellowship. And Father, this is the same thing you call us to do with you repeatedly, telling us to keep short accounts with you, 
through confession. First John 1 9 says that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So, Father, I pray that um, importantly, that each of us every day would take that evaluation and see what there is we need to confess and be forgiven for. I ask you to walk with us this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for, for that um, heartfelt prayer. And um, yeah, it is, as you were speaking, the Holy Spirit was talking to me about um, things that guys have been talking to me about all week for some reason in different settings, different people, about the vertical relationship that we have with God and that horizontal relationship that he wants. And so you think of the cross that way as a vertical um, connection with God and um, and that uh, horizontally he also, he wants to have a close relationship with each one of us, but he also calls us almost at the, at the same time and at the same level to have uh, brothers uh, to walk with, friends and to love one another as we love ourselves so uh you know the second greatest the second commandment uh is, is almost as great as the first i think is sort of paraphrasing what jesus said about that so um thank you thank you for being on thank tim for being on um and i uh hope that as the as the word gets out that the the app is more stable. It's already, I've already seen guys starting to, you know, be more active in the prayer group and in the community group and in this group. And uh, so I just continue, I pray that uh, it continues to be a blessing instead of the frustration that it's been for the last few months. Um, and that it'll get better even and uh, that God will use it to, um, to his glory. So as we, uh, to part of our time together to just go and be the church to those that are that um god puts in our path this week all right you too brother god Have bless you too bye bye now